All right. Yeah, you guys can hear us. Nice. Uh, all right. Let's get on. Uh, so, you know, you guys, I always want to provide value for you in the room on Thursdays, tactical things that you can walk away learning. And I know that there's a lot of agents here that have had the opportunity to work with investors or want to be investors or have interest in investing uh, themselves. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous, but it's not my world. So I wanted to bring on Dean. Um, uh, Dean's a friend of mine and uh, uh, all around good guy. Uh, he's got his hands dabbled in a lot of different things with uh, himself and his partner. So I will inter- let him introduce himself as well as give you a little bit short and sweet about you, um, your origin story, and then we'll just riff it. And it's going to be very open to questions because I have not prepared much. So what you guys want to know based on what you think Dean might be able to share, I'm sure he'll have some funny stories as he always does. So Dean, who right. are you? How did you get here? All right. So Dean Gazowski, 3D Property Solutions, probably one of the largest uh, wholesale uh, property companies in the Metro Detroit area. My partner's back there. He's not a fan of the camera, but good for him, I am. <laughs> He's actually, if you guys ever seen The Goods, you ever seen that movie? The goods with Don Reddy. Raise your hands. Nobody? Nope. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm an investor. Don is the wizard with the numbers. Like he's the F and I guy in the automotive dealership that makes all the things happen. Okay. Like he's the brain the behind the business. And like we always say, um, there's a book Floyd Wickman wrote called Traction. Okay. And you got an integrator and you got the visionary. I come up with ideas and then Don asks me questions. He says, why would we do that? Or here's how we apply it. You know, so or how do we make money on it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, because the idea is they, sure. they go. Yeah. And then pinning it down, that's, that's the thing. But, um, but yeah, you know, a little bit more background. So uh, going all the way back to the roots, kind of, you know, grew up in Westland. We just recently flipped the house over there. I had a grandma that cooked for the Pope. And um, but John Paul II, when he came through and... Uh, you know, I like to introduce her on that. So, I mean, it, you know, there's different stories that we get to tell throughout the business and, and things like that. How did you get into real estate? Um, well, that was, so fast forward, you know, I, I, the short 30 second elevator speeches, I went to school, learned to work on cars, got halfway through, figured out I didn't like getting my hands dirty. Like, what are you doing? Kind of got into sales after that, sold a couple different things, four wheelers, and then I went to insurance and then decided that commissions were not good enough insurance. So now I'm in real estate. And then I'm out here figuring out, you know, because I like to dress in t-shirt and jeans a lot of the times. And how do I do million dollar production type business, like the $30,000 commission off of a million dollar house? How do I do that on my own terms? And like so many different, uh, you know, agents and investors in the business, they read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I bought my first investor net investment house over in uh, Livonia, the duplex, because I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. The numbers worked. I think I need to go back and read this again, but the bottom line is if the numbers work, you do the deal. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. You know, what do the numbers need to look like? Yeah. And, um, you know, then there's a little bit of a leap of faith or a step of faith. That you oh, have to yeah. Do. Definitely. Yeah. Sure. Do, do the deal. Sure. Right? So, so what is, in, in short, what does 3D Property Solutions do? Um, so been working on this whole, whole hybrid model for years now, right? So we look for the deals. Okay. When you say look for the deals, pre- pretend I have no idea what you're okay. talking about. So you door knock, you mail, um, you cold it call? It depends. You know, I'll stop at estate sales. Okay. Okay. Hey, is the house for sale? Um, I will door knock if, it, you know, I haven't done that recently because, mm-hmm. you know, some people are scared to answer the door. Sure. They're going to sell me something. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we do a lot of mail. We do a lot of texting. We do a lot of cold calls. we got some people that work for us. That do, you know, like it, whatever um, we're looking for anybody who's interested in selling the house, we use all those different avenues. You're hunting and you're bird dogging. We're hunting and bird dogging. You're not so, waiting for a property to hit the market. No, although there's people out there that do that, 
and, and make a good living at it, but that's a lot of work in okay. my world. Okay. I think I think it truly is. Um, so you find yeah, the deals. We do, go after we, the deals. You find the deals, and then what? Um, then we lock them up under contract. We're going to decide right at that particular point whether it's something that we're going to wholesale or we're going to put out in the retail market. Okay, and I'm gonna. Uh, does anyone know what wholesaling is? I I know a few of you do. I don't know what it means. What's the cost to make this phone? Manufacturer. What's the manufacturer going to produce? Thirty bucks. Thirty dollars. Okay, what's the sell retail for? 300. Okay, if I can get a deal on this phone for 60 bucks from the manufacturer and sell it to you for 120, that's a win. Yeah. yeah, you that's make money, I, I save money. Yeah. You're Why just would doing you that as a one? house? Yes. Okay. Yes. And because the majority of the contracts, unless it's not, uh, if it's excluded, the contracts in Michigan are assignable. Okay. So you're going out and you're finding an opportunity. You're committing to buy it for a certain amount, and then you're you don't really have the intention to buy it. You go out and try to find someone who's going to buy it from you at an amount that you never have to own it, but you make you make a you make a, a, a nice nut. You make that thirty thousand dollar commission potentially, but you don't have to sell that million dollar house. Yes, but the one thing um, I'll fix that you said. If I if I don't have intent to buy a house, I'm gonna let whoever my contact is know that. Okay, all right. And my contracts are very clear. Like, look, there's this general idea that, is, well, let's call it what it is. Just like real estate agents, there's people that are shady in the investment business. I'm sure. Real scumbags, Sure. right? And I don't need that hanging over my head. I'm not gonna sow that bad seed. So I'll be transparent with you. Okay. Here's how we do business. I'm gonna do it on the cash and assignment. I'm gonna have some of my partners come through. We're gonna look at this place. But I'm seasoned enough in the business to know that I can spend blank on this house, mark it up, you know, a certain amount of money. And then, you know, the, the, the end flipper can make you know, 15%. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes that is you. So yes. you go and you find a deal, you might wholesale it, you might buy it yourself in order to do what? Flip it, hold on to it, both. Both. In fact, I got uh, the power washer in the back of my SUV today because I got to go and uh, power wash the side of this house in this garage so it then can be painted. That was a house we bought in Redford. They had a tenant in insanely low payment, like 550 bucks a month. Our interest payment was 800. So we took a loss on the period, you know, for basically a year. And now she moved out. We're going through issues with the city. It's a long, drawn-out process. Don't flip houses in Redford. Wholesale them. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, now we're going to end up selling that place. So it's, you know, we're flipping that one, but we ended up taking it on with a tenant inside because it made sense. And it, again, if the numbers make sense, that's kind of what we did. Okay. So wholesaling it, buying it, and maybe taking over if there's a tenant in, if it's vacant, maybe just flipping it, maybe improving it and then renting it out? Or is your intention not to hold properties? It's essentially to add value and then move them? The long-term, yes, it is. Okay. If the numbers make sense, but right now in our world, like right now we've got a deal over in Madison Heights that is under contract and probably needs 35,000 worth of work. It needs windows, it's got a good roof, but it needs a gut on the inside. If it's a duplex, you know, uh, we convert it to a single family, it's probably worth 185000 without a garage, okay. right? Decent part of town. But, you know, it's, it's a big job. It's yeah. a big job. So I don't know that we necessarily want to go after, you know, that particular property and, and buy it. We ended up wholesaling, right? That's, that one's one that is actually in the works at the moment. So um, just, but, so uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, go. The numbers, so what, what you know, what you and Don look at is, you're looking at the opportunity, what, what I can buy it for, right? And that is essentially what you can agree with, with the owner, right? Maybe they're in a distressed situation. Maybe it's an estate that they don't, you know, the family doesn't want it, take this house. And it could be worth in fair market, 150. But the same reason people go and turn their car in at the dealership is they don't want to clean it up. They don't want to fix it up. 
They just want to be done with it. They understand they're going to get a little less money than they might in the retail, but that's okay with them, right? Yes, yes. They understand. Yep. So you, you analyze those deals and then you decide what, what's going to make the most sense for us to do. Absolutely. And big jobs really don't make the most sense. Like if I got to tear out a kitchen and a bathroom and refinish the rest of the house, that's going to take a certain amount of time. Contractors are at a premium right now rather than just going in and doing carpet and paint, which is a hotel type of a deal. And then you can just go ahead and you know, put, put that back on the open market. So that's, that's interesting because these, these flipping TV shows, right? Everyone's seen them, right? They make it look like the worse the house is, the more money's to be made. And in some cases that could be true if you buy it at the right price. However, like you said, materials have never been more expensive or hard to get. Contractor labor is super expensive. Time, right? Time is money, especially if you're borrowing money, right? Or even if it's your own, tying it up into a project for oh, yeah. six months a year is, is incredibly expensive. So you're looking at doing a little bit of a lipstick, right? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes if it's warranted, but you also got to produce a property that's going to sell in the market. Yeah. You know, lipstick's not going to work in Birmingham or ah. Farmington Hills in a lot of situations. Fresh coat of paint. If the kitchen, I'm, I'm looking at one right now in Madison Heights that somebody brought to me. It's, it's, oof, I don't know, maybe ten thousand dollars worth of updating needed. Okay. Carpet paint. Mm -hmm. It's offered at one hundred fifty. The ARV, which is the after repair value, what it should sell for on the open market is two hundred to ten. Uh, in theory, I've got a sixty thousand dollars spread right there. But what we don't typically take into consideration, we'll get in the numbers talk right now, $60,000 is not the profit. What's it going to cost me to borrow $150,000? Well, what's 12% interest? 2.12%, that's the typical number. But if we just back it down for easy numbers, we're going to borrow 150, pay 10% on that. That's 15,000 a year, right? Now break that down into monthly payments. What is that like 12, 1300 yeah. bucks? Yeah. Interest only. So the guys with the money are really plowing it in, which is somewhere where we're making a transition. But you think about that, you got how much money? So we're gonna hold it for six months. We've got just say a thousand dollars interest. So that's gonna be six thousand dollars in interest plus your two points for the privilege of borrowing that money. Now you're eight thousand dollars deep in your overhead. So now your 60s down to 52. And then what else do we have? Selling costs, $200,000 house. What's the commission on that? 8% of, of, yeah. of, of 200,000. That's what, 16,000? Yeah. Okay. So $16,000. Add that to what? Eight? Mm -hmm. wow, wow. Now, 20. So now you're almost in half, plus whatever repairs you got to put into it. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars because you got to go high because we're sure. never going to stick the budget. Sure, nobody ever sticks the budget. And then while you're owning it for that six months, something happens to it, which inevitably is going to. Yeah, you know, roof everything else. So next thing you know, you're looking at it. But if you have your own money, an equity line of credit, so to speak, can that potentially go back in your pocket and be another revenue source? So the market's getting squeezed right now because everybody's taking deals at less. I mean, this is happening in, in commercial real estate, sure. apartment buildings, where you could get deals over in Detroit for a 15 cap, which means basically 15% yep. profit. Now they're like seven and eight caps. You know, rents are getting raised. And, you know, it's, it's a very competitive market right now. And um, that's why I'm really trying to stick with wholesaling. Because again, I got to go power wash this house today. Just so I can make a couple bucks. Do I look like I want a power wash? No, but in, in my in my twenty five dollars shirt, you you quit you quit the automotive because you didn't want to get your hands dirty, right? I did say that, didn't I? What do you guys have any questions so far? I I, I apologize if any of this is above anyone's head or making anyone spin, but I want Ask to make questions. Sure we're, we're available. I, well, my biggest question is how do you find the investors? Like like I've I've kind of. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat as Matt. Like I know some of the stuff that you're, you're kind of giving right now, but like it's finding those. And then how do you work with the investors? How do you, where, where do you go next? So, so I, uh, let me, let me, let me piggyback on that. You know, these guys are out. I, I think 
they have the biggest opportunity to find the deals. I, I don't, if you're a, a member of some of these Facebook investment groups, it seems to me that there's like, there's a lot of these buyers and these people want to be put on these buyer lists, right? Whether they're legitimate buyers or not, I don't know, but there's people with buyers and then there's, then there's, then there's, so you got to find a buyer, right? If you're wholesaling, you've got to find the deal. And then also, unless you have your own money, you've got to find the money, right? You yes. got to put those pieces together. Does that, does that make sense? Right. So where do you fit into that? And how do you find those people? Well, let, let's revisit that. Okay. Terry, let me ask you a question. Um, what do you mean investors? Why would you want to find investors to sell the flip house to, or to sell? As a, as a, so imagine herself as a real estate agent. Like, yeah. Are you, are you thinking like, Hey, I'm a real estate agent here. Uh, what, what can I, what value can I add to somebody? I don't want to buy the house myself. Maybe you're saying right. I be the wholesaler, but what value can I bring to, to connect? Yes. Like how do I connect all the pieces? Okay. So, so let me start with that. We as real estate agents have a unique perspective in this market because we're invited in people's kitchens to talk about listing their home before anyone else is. So in theory, we're not bird dogging every day, but we're out in the market, right? So we have the ability to find some of these deals, right? Right. And, and I don't know about you guys, if anyone's ever asked, and that's why these, 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 these iBuyer programs are going to continue to spread is when you walk in the door with someone, you sometimes you have someone that says, I want top dollar, I want to list it. I want to have all the buyers out. And there's some people that say, I just want to be done with this house, right? I, I want to be out. So as real estate agents, we do have those opportunities. So if Terry, if you come across that, if you go into someone's kitchen and they say, we inherited this house from grandma, nothing's owing on it. We don't want to do it. The family's in a wreck. The brothers are arguing. We would just like to be done. If someone came in with a hundred K, Great. How do you as a real estate agent capitalize on that? That's a great question. All right. So here's, um, you know me, right? Dean Gazowski, 3D Property Solutions. Let me tell you a story about a guy that brought me a deal, brought us a deal, and he walked away with 17 grand. Okay. I was a house and tailor. Uh, it was a situation that just didn't work out. It was being rented for a while. It was a family member's house and the house was trashed. We came in, offered a certain amount of money for it. And I gave a finder's fee to that real estate agent. Okay. So here's what we bring to the table, Terry. You only need one contact. And this isn't a self-serving comment. What it is, think of us as your resource. Okay. If you got something that is a situation that Matt just explained, so-and-so has a house and they just want to get rid of it. Now, sure, you've got a fiduciary responsibility to your client, right? To lay out the numbers. We've got what's called a page three. Um, and in this page three, here's your retail price. Here's what Zillow says. Here's what Realtor.com says. I know how we feel about these websites, but you can't ignore them because people are looking at them. Here's what the, the algorithm says. Here's my expert opinion after it's all fixed. And then here's the current market value. Here's what repairs you need to get it to sell on the open market. Here's how you could price it as is. And then here's my cash offer. Now, Terry, that $150,000 house, if it's all fixed up in that neighborhood, we're talking Redford now at this point, 200,000 if it's Farmington, you know, but 70% minus repairs. So if you guys are taking notes here, here's what you write down. 70% of market value of what the top end is worth. Okay, after the fixed house up. is all fixed up. Okay. 150, 70% of that is 105,000. Okay. Now that's not all profit. We talked about this earlier with the cost of money, holding costs, selling costs and the realtor end. So, 30% is your potential markup yep. minus whatever repairs. If that house needs a roof, you know, and there's scripts to use, we won't get into it right now, but you're walking through with that homeowner, that seller, uh, Terry, and okay, well, the house is going to need a kitchen. It's either functional obsolescence or it's damaged or if it's updated, whatever. You, you go through and they're like, okay, it needs a kitchen. 8,000, 12,000, depending on, you know, the size of the house. 
bathrooms, your averages are five to eight thousand dollars to redo a bathroom. Okay, so you're going through. This is what I do. I just check the box. Check the box. If it's how if the house is trashed, you know it's thirty dollars per square foot to fix that thousand dollar square foot house. So it's thirty thousand dollar wholesale. That never it takes into consideration windows and roof. Okay, windows, roof. Figure about three hundred bucks a window to replace a vinyl window. Okay, it's a good safe number. Roof, thousand square foot, Livonia Westland Ranch. Probably right now, one of the best prices you'll find is about six thousand. That's about right. So add those numbers up, and then say, listen, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I understand you inherited this house, or is this house you just want to get out? And the real kicker is right now with this foreclosure moratorium that is probably not getting extended. Yeah. There's opportunity and you're gonna get a lot more phone calls coming up, right? So there's there's opportunity here, but let's finish up with what we're talking about. I'll try not to be too scattered. Oh yeah. Here's the number I could get you an investor, an investor cash offer. So if you just wanna be done with this thing, this headache, this heartache, this nuisance, so you don't have to come out here and cut the grass, pay somebody to cut, whatever. We're in sales at the end of the day. I can get you a cash offer or we can go retail on this end. It's gonna take you about 90 days to get the money or I can have you money in 20 days. Is Obviously that, we had a clear title and you know, stuff like that. So is that, does that make sense, Terry? Thumbs up, yes? I think so. Okay, so so what I get, I, uh, I'm I, trying to follow, and uh, but I'm I I I think I I think I've got it. I just have to process it a little bit. But basically, okay. you're saying is you're finding what the market value would be after it's fixed, taking all of those fixes that you are walking through and subtracting it from there, and then letting them know the differences of the the value of the home um yeah, let, but i'm not sure where the, the let, cash let, offer is it the 30 percent? that's where the cat like less than that is the is the cash offer that's where i, I got I, lost yeah so what i would what i would say is i don't i don't want to tell any seller what dean or 3d property solutions is going to give us a cash offer i think he provided some some rule of thumb kind of thing but okay. what i my script as an agent is going to say the benefit of working with me, Mr. Mr. Seller, is that I can help do a number of different things. I can do, I can utilize my marketing and expertise and put this on the market at its price, right? Because that's what the market is, 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 is calling for right now based on the retail. What we can also look at is you fixing up this, this, and this, and us potentially listing the house for a little bit more. That's going to require you putting, ejecting money and time into this property, which most people don't want to do. If none of, if neither of those are appealing to you or you don't want to wait, you know, put it 45, 60, 90 days. We can also talk about getting a, 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 one of my investors that I work with to come in and give it you a, a cash offer opportunity to take the home as is in a very quick time frame. Is that something we'd like to explore? Yes. Okay, great. They're going to come in and they're going to look at what the potential is for that house, right? What the value will be if they do all of those things, right? And they're going to back that out plus the expenses and all the carrying costs that comes with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to give you a price that, that, that you know, a cash price that, that, that would give you a quick close. Is that? That's so well explained, Matt. No, oh, thank you. I'm in sales. Uh, the, the value as a real estate agent, you guys think 99% of real estate agents aren't having these conversations, right? So these, these deal, these, these, these operate, but we, we are again, and Wendy says this, we have the opportunity. We're on the ground seeing these opportunities. We are driving by a potential new listing, seeing the neighbor's house, talking with the seller and, and then sharing with us that, yeah, that's the old lady. That's old lady Miller. She's on her, you know, she's on her last legs, right? We could, you could provide that opportunity to Dean, to 3D property. And, you know, I don't know any property in Taylor that would give me a $17,000 commission, maybe a commercial building. But if I could get a finder's fee for coming out and it could be a win, 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 
and I don't have to list the property? Hoorah. Yeah, yeah at the very so, best case scenario, you keep both sides of the, the commission. Yeah, okay. Um, that's that's fine. Cool. Bring, bring us a deal. We got your money. What's that song? Got your money. ODB. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey. So, help me out here, So uh, I have a potential seller. Um, For real or is this made up? What's that? Don't get me excited. Say well, this is real. It, it's... Um, they're selling the house. Um, it needs needs work. Um, the impression I'm getting is they would rather not do the work. So uh, I know I'm going to get the listing. Nothing signed yet. So how do I protect myself from an unscrupulous person if I say, hey, you know, this the seller is interested in maybe entertaining a cash offer just so they can get their money and go. So in a case like that, again, because I've never dealt in that, you know, in that fashion of the real estate world. So how do I how do I protect myself from potentially losing a client? Lock them up under contract. Exclusive right to sell. I think at the end of the day, that's how it started before we made up our own contracts. Um, I just use an exclusive right to sell and then I use purchase agreement and I put some, you know, my company's buying it. Right. And disclose that I'm an agent, I'm pursuing a profit and like it's very clear. But what you're, you're suggesting is you just want to lock it up under contract. Is that right, John? Well, I, again, having never dealt in that facet, yeah. what I don't want to happen is you know, I'll go to somebody and say, hey, I have this potential you know, business for you and then getting snaked out of it, you know, snaked out. Of yeah. Well, number one, that's only going to happen once if it ever does happen. Right. So, you know, rest assured, if you bring that deal to me, my reputation isn't worth $30,000. Hey, got the money in my pocket now, but people are talking bad about me. Okay. So that proverb talks about, you know, good names worth, you know, far more than gold and silver. You know that. Yeah. But with John, I think what John's asking is, you know, you have the opportunity to find one of these deals, you know, and we see it on these Facebook groups. They put it out there and it's like, I got this deal, you know, and then people say, well, you got to put the address. You know, that's a rule of this Facebook group. You got to put the address. But if they have not locked it under some sort of agreement. All of a sudden they got people knocking on that door. Oh, saying, and there's people that do that. I heard I heard this is a great deal. So when you are when you are presenting this, make sure that, you know, you are working with someone you trust or you are putting it under agreement before you start shopping it around, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and truth be told, the, the mark, I, I've got the A-list buyers that I don't have to even get that stuff out to the, the, my buyers list. Yeah. You know, the, the one property we've got in Madison Heights, I know my business well enough. I know how much I should be making on it. And I know what my guys will pay. And if I can pull a quick 20 out of that deal, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, do you have any, any other questions so far? So Dean, I have a property that is possibly selling. It is an Inkster Wayne Westland schools. The, I could list it for probably 85 right now. Okay. They have put some of the work into it, but the flipped houses in the neighborhood are selling for 115 to 120. So we're talking just south, the Brick Ranch is just south of Cherry Hill, Wayne Westlands. Correct. Said that. Yeah. Correct. So is that something possibly that I would bring bring to you to see? Yes. Yes. Now, um, I've sold probably, the last house we sold in Easter was on Emerson, okay? Dead end of the street. Um, but that market has changed. There's, I will get you off on it. I mean, any property that you got, we'll get you an offer on it. What we would pay as is, and then you get paid out of the commission or, you know, however that needs to work. We'll make a full agreement on that, uh, you know, before we really even move forward. You know, we'll make sure that you're taken care of, but then you're, you're still the go-between. And again, you keep both sides of the commission. And if it makes sense to, you know, keep more, you know, let's do it. So as an agent, you have the opportunity to, 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 to get the seller, you know, you, you have the opportunity on both sides. And I know that, that some of the investors, you know, they're just looking for wholesale deals. And if that person decides not to sell to them, they end up listing with an agent. In some cases, you go in and you find an opportunity 
and they either are willing to put some money into it or they don't want to take that wholesale deal, but you guys will list it. Will you do that as well? And that, and that's something that, you know, not all investors do. Some of them are, some of these investors aren't even licensed real estate agents, right? Sure. Yes. Okay. That's correct. So in some cases, the seller goes, well, I, I actually would like to get top dollar for my house or close to it. And I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do that. But you found that opportunity. So, right, you're in that appointment. You're not going to turn away that business. Yeah. Well, it's another talking point. When you sit down, we're going back to very early, when we're finding the deals, yeah. right? What are we going to do with it? We're either going to get you a know, cash offer. And again, my page three says listed on the open market. Yep. This is the expected time, turnaround time, or we're going to pay you cash. Yep. What do you want to do? Yeah. What's in your best interest? I don't, and I do care. Sure. I like more money rather than less. Sure. But at the end of the day, it's your decision to select which one you want. Got it. So if I bring in 3D and you guys say, no, we, the, the seller says, I don't want your cash offer. You're not going to try to get the listing. You're saying that's still your listing opportunity, right? Well, no, I mean, you're still, I'm still dealing directly yes. through, through yes. you. So yeah, I mean, that's your, I, I just don't want any I'm not, not going to go, um, I'm not going to go back door yeah. on you and say, do that. Um, although our contract does say we can list properties on the open market. Sure. Um, but that's all. I mean, we just, we sort that out. Yeah. So it's Dan, an can, can you make sure that um, Dean's information's in the chat for us? Here, just jot. You want to jot down my uh, phone number, my direct office line? Can I give that out? Of course. Here, let me chat it to you. All right. Well, here, while she's doing that, 248. Hold on, I'm going to write it. 248. 940-1099. Is that the number you want me to give out, Doc? Good. Yeah. It's all tracking purposes. That's why you can text that. Um, I'm sorry. Trace got 948. it. 940-1099. Thank you. All right. What, what other questions so far for Dean? I'm really, I'm really interested in, in specifically uh, two things. One, understanding the numbers. And I think that comes with a lot of experience because I know that I, 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 I don't know. I didn't know an average roof would be a six grand, right? But then again, when you say average, you have to be able to know, oh, that roof line's got a little bit, that's bigger, you know, this and that. So if I'm saying six, it's really probably eight or 10. Um, a bathroom, six, eight, you know, seeing things and knowing expenses. I think that comes with, with, with experience. What I think is the most opportunity, and I've heard this quote, I don't know if anyone, anyone else has, tell me if this is true. You make money when you buy, not when you sell. Yeah. It's like anything, right? Okay. So tell me a little bit about how you find these deals, because if I'm just searching MLS each day, it's probably safe to assume that a great deal, if you will, has been passed up by a few people before it went on the open market. Or it's going to have multiple offers. Or it's going to have multiple offers and sell for it, right? So if the, if the agent or the seller that doesn't know what they have lists that Livonia ranch for 110, it's not going to go for 110. It's going to go for 150 because there's going to be multiple offers because it's been revealed to the open market. So how do you find these deals that before they get to the open market? How do you get those inside scoop? I mean, no, we talked no, about no, it no, earlier. We're talking, but, we're talking opportunity right yes. now. Um, off-market deals, how do we find our deals? We go through texting, we pull lists, okay? It, it basically boils down to a list. There's a guy out there, uh, US lead list. He will sell you a, a, a lead, somebody that has died somewhere in this, this lineage of this property and has transferred ownership to somebody that was an heir. Now these leads are at least $1.70 a piece. This guy's really a lead proof provision company. That's okay. what he does. Minimum 500, but you know, you can buy a county, but then you got to go do the work. Okay. So, so the, the list, I can get you a list of homeowners anywhere, right? We've got Red X, we've got all these things, but yeah. what do you do with that information is the, yeah. And, and that's real key, but here's, let, let's dig on that a little bit more because this is stuff that we're actually seeing. And if you guys are going out there, uh, you agents are going out there and finding these deals, just remember, you can always bring them to us. This is shameless plug. But absentee owns get the most amount of pressure, okay? What an absentee owner is, somebody that's, or an out-of-state owner, somebody that has a rental property, 
Have you heard stories about tenants not paying the rent? <laughs> For real? Yes. Okay. Yes. Foreclosure moratorium is being lifted on the 30th. People are sweating bullets. Okay. So there's that. Now, those people aren't paying their landlord. Is it possible that their landlord's not paying the mortgage? Is their landlord getting letters like this guy that I just got a letter and signed a deal with and will be closing two weeks from now in Redford? He got a letter that said, notice of intent to foreclose. Oh my God, what's that mean? It means you're getting foreclosed on hell, right? Here's your notice. Last payment in red was made 4-22 of 20. So it's been over a year since the dude made his payment, okay? Now the situation, the backstory is not important. Having a little bit of sympathy towards this guy, you know, I mean, like, and, and that, I'm just going to launch off in this story. I walk through the door and um, immediately shake his hand. You know, I'm reading the situations, okay? You know me, I'm going to walk into situations and just kind of, I'm going to be me, yeah. right? Shake his hand. And he gets into, he's like, he, like one of the first sentences that comes out of his mouth. He says, I have not made a payment in over a year. Like, really? You've not, okay, tell me more about that. Okay, how much do you owe on the house? Because I want to know if I'm wasting my time, this guy, the guy owes $100,000 on this house, or if he owns something that I can actually pay for it. How much do you need? How much do you owe? How much do you want? And he tells me the two numbers, okay? I'm bold, I'm going to ask you. If you don't tell me the first time, I'm going to ask you again. He tells me, and I'm like, oh, okay. And well, if he tells you a high number, you're, I know you, you're going to ask, what's the real number? <laughs> Depends. Yes, I will. Um, but I gave him reassurance because, again, here's a guy that's not been through this situation. I find out later that it was his first house that he ever really bought. Failure to launch situation, moved out of mom's basement. You know, he's 50 years old, buys his first house. Now he's losing it. He's scared. Okay, so you're scared. Let me give you some reassurance here, pal. How much do you owe? Oh, well, I could just step in foot in the house. I could probably get close. That's the good news. But let's see. Let me let me go ahead and see the rest of the house. And then we walk through and, you know, sure enough, not like I used that number against him because my actual, Terry, 70% minus repair. Okay, here's the, how the numbers worked on this house. If it's $150,000 after it's all fixed up, 70% of that 150 is 105. Do the math. 105 is my purchase price of that house if it's absolutely perfect. Make sense? But the house needed windows, needed a roof, needed all, it needed $37,000 worth of work. So now 105 minus 375, what was my offer price? 68. Yeah, it was actually closer to, yeah, something like 65. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what did he owe on it? Like 43 or something like that. And he wanted to walk away with like 60 some thousand. So I think my first offer on that one was 63. That's what the numbers actually calculated out to be. Okay. And I said, you know what? I can get you to 65. I can throw another couple of grand in there. Not as icing on the cake or like a sales tactic or anything like that, but almost from a comfort contribution, like, okay, it seems a little low. I can do this. I know so this, I can do this. So this guy's got a tenant, no tenant in the home, facing some foreclosure. This is his primary residence. Oh, way. wow. Okay. So he's, 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 he hasn't made a payment in a year. He's facing yep. foreclosure. Uh, you know, he doesn't want to put, he doesn't have any money to put into it. He doesn't want to put any money into it, but he can get out of the foreclosure opportunity and walk away with some cash. Yes. It's a win-win. Yep. Yep. And his credit. That's the big thing. Yeah. And there's so many people out there right now that will just take what they bought the house for. That's like an underlying theme. I never go in expecting that, but I see that. It's a mental. I see it quite a bit. Oh, if I can just get my money out of it, I just paid rent for however long. Like I'm doing that with a car right now. By the way, quick side note, I'm no automotive expert, but if you got a car to trade in, used cars are like, everything's going crazy right now. And I cut this video earlier today um, because I'm doing a, um, a marketing campaign in Farmington. 
right behind Farmington High School. That's my new farm, just in case anybody's wondering. There's houses that sold June last year, the same brick ranches, you know, the trifecta, sold for $200,000. Now, fast forward, present day, I got a comp out there for two seventy five. dollars I got another one for two ninety. dollars $85,000 growth. We know 10% growth in a market is $20,000 if we're looking at a $200,000 house. So if that two hundred dollars is now a two twenty dollars one year later, but it's not, it's Two ninety and two seventy five. What do they call it? Unsustainable growth. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, foreclosure moratoriums coming. Okay, interest rates are still low. I expect that they'll still stay low because the government's printing money, yeah. and they need the velocity of money to continue. Yeah. Right. That's the rate of which money changes hands between people. Right. So. Rates are low. Government needs a spending. By the way, quick side note, the government's always going to give you an incentive to do what they want you to do. Rates are, you know, mortgages are kind of a little difficult to get, you know, uh, for, for lenders or uh, for uh, re uh, rental properties right now. But just, you know, that's a thought. So they're giving us incentive to continue to spend by, you know, giving low rates. And um, you got to read into what's going to happen in the market. You got to constantly stay in tune with, uh, you know, the inventory days on market. In fact, I just looked at it today. And I, I track the whole state, the whole MLS area. And back pre-COVID, we were like, not pre-COVID, about six months ago, we were about 2,100 active properties. And all those properties will basically go pending. 30 day absorption rate. Now, present day, we're about 3,100 properties in the past week. And that number has been consistent over the past four weeks or so, but it has taken a bump from like 2,600 properties. And I know I'm just kind of throwing some general numbers out there, but when you look at your real estate dashboard on RealCom, okay, there's the residential, there's the multifamily, you can pick what numbers you want to see there. And um, that's mentally, when I check in, I see that every day. And then I can make assumptions of what's happening in the market. So watch for those numbers to tick up. Watch for the, number, the inventory and use that when you're having these conversations with your sellers. Say, listen, do you see, have you seen how much property values up, are up over the past year? Okay, it's not sustainable. If you're thinking about selling, now's the time to do it. I know we can't necessarily predict where the cruise ship's making its actual U-turn, but at the end of the day, $85,000 growth in this one particular subdivision, I don't think we're going to have $85,000. This isn't Bitcoin, right? So It's what not if, sustainable, but it provides opportunity. Well, it is, but now where are you guys going to go? Well, that's a step of faith that you're going to have to take. Yeah. You know, We just sold one up on Farmington Road one of a kind property. I was wearing the same shirt in the video that I cut. It's got a river in the backyard. That place was listed truly. And this isn't sales pitch, truly a one of a kind property, right? Listed for 350,000. And that place ended up selling for, for 400. All right. Which is common in Farmington Hills, right? 30 to $40,000 above ask. Mm -hmm. The key is the appraisal guarantee that we locked down on it. Sure. To, make sure that it's causing, you know, yeah. to sell. Yeah. And then that client went ahead and bought another house for $30,000 above the value or list price yeah. in actually it was 20 over in commerce. Yeah. So there's a bit of transition that has to happen, but the markets get, if you're really paying attention, at least the way I see it, the market's getting a little bit more loose right now. And if you know how to win deals, I mean, you can win deals all day yeah. long. Okay. So um, we, we all know that the real estate market has been a seller's market for the past year, right? Multiple offers, that kind of thing. Uh, if those of you have been in real estate for long enough to know, it's not always like this, right? It, it will shift and it, it'll, I, I, wanna, I don't want to scare you, but it will happen faster than you think it will. And you'll look back and say, wow, when did this happen? Just kind of like we did with this market. COVID about hit. People freaked out, took their houses off the market. 
a year later, I mean, I know I listed a property 20 grand more than we, than they took it off the market last year, unsold. They sold it this year. So it can happen very quickly again. But what opportunities should we look for as the market shifts um, when properties sit a little bit longer, don't have multiple offers? Dan, have you, 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 we were talking leads. Can I back up a little bit? You mentioned a, a lead source, but have you, and you know, if you see a estate sale or something, what do you also, I, I've heard in, you know, different classes to start getting friends with lawyers and estate planners, and I haven't yet. Do you utilize folks like that, CPAs? Yes. That be friends like that? I need to do that. Yeah, and that's all, that's, that's not going to be a lead source that dries up, okay? Because you're going to have one or two people that are in your sphere that you have a good relationship with that you'll be able to receive leads from. That's all. Yeah, I recommend it all day long. So, I mean, what Tammy's saying is, is you know, having your database full of, of not just normal buyers, sellers, but also people that are going to give you the inside opportunities to listings and pre-floor closures and landlords that have tenants that weren't paying, landlords who got in over their head, accidental landlords, People inherited houses, all those kinds of things. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, just pick something and go with it. Don't try to do everything. Ah. Don't try to do everything. Like, you know, I um, this is one of the things that Don really keeps me in line with. I was talking to him this morning because every morning, like we run like an actual company, right? Um, can't believe it. I run an actual company. A business. He runs it. <laughs> but he keeps me aligned because here's our meeting times. Here's a time where we get the, you know, the group of seven together and, and talk about all of our leads. And, you know, we, every, every day, basically, except for Fridays and the weekends, uh, we have conversations about our business. Um, go back to your question. What, do you remember what your question was? Um, five, well, originally before we got off from this, was, was, um, I lost track too. What should we look for as the market shifts? What should we look for as the market shifts? Yeah, what opportunities <laughs> are there? you, Kim. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Somebody's listening to this rant. Um, so as, as, as the market shifts and in and, and these properties, you know, because right now, like, it seems like you can list anything, right? Well, well like, let's just, throw, yeah, it could need a whole new roof and the, it's caving in, but screw it. There's not a lot of properties on the market. Let's list it and we'll probably get multiple offers. It's not going to be like that. Yes. Right. It's no, not going to continue to be like that. That's exactly right. Um, so will it present buying opportunities? Will it present list, you know, buying and hold opportunities? Will it present flip opportunities? It's kind of hard to flip a property in a depreciated market, isn't it? It is. You got to stay ahead of pricing. Okay. Absolutely have to stay ahead of pricing. I remember looking up, um, when I would target, you, and you're going to have to make sense of your own lists, all right? What I tell you is not going to make sense to you because built on stuff that I can't even explain. Trial and error? No. Yeah, I mean, that's some of it. A lot of it's just a hunch. Uh, but here's what we know. If you're going to watch what's happening, Kim, Matt, when days on market begin to increase... We know houses don't sell on a weekend all the time. That's a very per case basis. But when you have the conversations in the office and the 20 offers on a particular property start to go down to six, five, then you're going of two weeks before a house sells. I mean, everything's got its age that it has to you know, reach before it sells as a whole. And that's maturity in the business. You just understand that. So, but Average days on market. Who knows what the average days on market for Michigan is? Is it, is it over 35 yet? I, that's a great question. Okay. I, wouldn't be so, no, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Okay. Know. So last I knew it was like between 45, uh, or excuse me, between 35 and 40. Okay. When those numbers start to creep up, now that's the whole area as a whole, um, if that's not too redundant. But you know, look at your tri-county area and, and just know your neighborhoods. Know what's selling. Know what is odd. Okay, just know what's a standout. Okay, we know if a property's been on the market for 14 days in this market, something's going on. Either it's overpriced or it's funky or it's overpriced or it's overpriced. You know, um, so watch days on market. I'm watching interest rates. 
Absolutely watch interest rates. Uh, the lumber prices that everybody's chatting about right now, well, the July futures, we're going to have a lumber adjustment. Okay, that'll loosen up. Um, the foreclosure moratorium is really what I'm watching. Okay, because I know that that's going to be a shift that's going to allow people to get evicted, and that's that's going to loosen things up a little bit. But that's not going to be an overnight situation. I had a conversation with the foreclosure attorney a while back, Linnell Associates, um, the bunny who processes short sales and stuff like that. She said that there's 10,000 sheriff sales that are waiting to get processed through the county, um, the counties. Is it? Let's put it in perspective. Okay. Going back to those numbers on my dashboard that I look at per week, we've got 3,100 new properties that are available this week for the whole MLS. We're talking all the different you know, yeah. real comps and everything else all the way up to, basically you're going to report all the way out to Kent County. Okay, which is Grand Rapids for those of you don't, that don't know. Um, but if you go to the general five county area, Lenaway, Livingston, then the, the three counties that we're dealing with, the numbers that I just looked at today, 1,700. So those, those properties need to get processed through the system. You have to get the notice, the sheriff sale notice. Then once they're foreclosed on, we know that they get a six month redemption period, right? So if I know opportunity when I see it, there's a sheriff sale opportunity. So those, age, those, those investors that like to go to the county and bid on that stuff, they're going to go scoop that up. That's not my business. I'm not going down that road. Okay. I don't, I want to see a house before I bid on it mm -hmm. just because. But also there's people that are out there that will buy all that stuff up sight unseen because the numbers make sense and they need to keep their hedge fund moving with the money that they're, they're moving. Right. Well, let me ask you this. If someone's facing, like, I, I haven't paid my mortgage or my tenant hasn't paid, so I haven't paid, and now all of a sudden it's lifted and, and you can potentially go through a sheriff's sale on yep. it, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to let that house for close, though. Because if I bought it at 100 and it went to 150 and then I went to 200 and then it's uh, it's been trashed, so it's down to 150, I still have some potential equity in that. No doubt. Right? So totally. if, I, if, I'm, if I'm dumb, I'm going to let it go to foreclosure. I'm just going to write it off. If I'm, if I'm not dumb, I'm going to be open to a bird dog. I'm going to be open to an opportunity or I'm going to raise my hand saying, I don't know what to do with this, but I know that I can walk away with a little bit of money. I just want the easiest, cleanest way to, to walk away though. Yeah. And, and that's, so I guess bringing it back to that, anything can be sold for the right price. And if you need that opinion, call us. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Right. And, th and this uh, wasn't set up as like, hey, call me because yeah. Yeah. No. this is what we do. So, but, so let me but, let me I'm going to wrap it up because I've got a hard start them. at 12. Yeah. Let's pretend let's pretend I'm an agent that's listening to this and all this is great. But I and I, and I but I don't want to just be an agent. I'm actually interested in this world. How can I learn more about what you do and how to do it myself potentially? So. Uh, well, I'm leading you into. Yeah, we, we've got we've got. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Matt. We've got a coaching program through the RIA, the Michigan RIA. Uh, so Wendy's got this group that meets out in Troy, actually Sterling Heights now, where um, we teach investors how to do deals. We've got a coaching program that's within that investor group. We've got four coaches that are there. And then we're now, we've, as we're, we're at very beginning stages of launching that here at the Market Center. Um, not everybody that's in uh, the business you know, here at the market center is uh, able to, to capitalize on that. But if it's something that you guys are interested in, reach out to Matt, reach out to Matt, reach out to me. We'll begin that process. And, and if, if you don't qualify, we can still do business like what you're talking about, uh, Terry, where you can bring those people that have the houses that you need to sell and, and we'll get you well taken care of. So, and if, and if you guys are out there and you're meeting with, uh, investors or agents that do investing, you know, you can feel comfortable saying you should come and talk to our Keller Williams office because we offer coaching for retail business. We offer coaching for investors. We've got resources here for everyone, depending on what path that you want to kind of take your business. Nobody um, else is doing this in this market. No, nobody else has capability uh, in, in the relationships that we have in the investing community. 
And, um, and that's, that's really the truth of it. So it's something that to yeah. consider. So I, I got a hard stop at 12. Uh, Dean provided his information. Uh, I'm sure he would be happy to do a follow-up if you guys uh, have questions or if you are interested. Uh, I know Wendy put, puts it out there. The events are typically on Saturdays, so they're open to people that work nine to fives. Um, reach out to him as a resource, both for, for getting their opinion of value on properties as well as learning what they do. I think these things are just, you're, they're, they're arrows in your quiver, right? I don't want to be an expert in any of this but I want to know enough to be dangerous. So if I come across a situation, I've got someone in my Rolodex to call, okay? And if it's something that you say, you know what, that sounds really appealing and I want to do that, talk to Dean about potentially learning more about that to see if it's a fit, because it's not for everyone. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> I'll tell stories for another day. Maybe we'll do a follow-up on this and I'll, I'll tell specifically tell stories about the investing business. And I love, I love that I've been in a little, a little, uh, Dean's forms kind of style. All right. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Personal. Thank you. Don't hesitate to reach out to Dean. Um, and, uh, appreciate your guys' time. Have a Thank great you. weekend. Thank you. Thanks Matt. Dean, Come I'll on. be in contact too. I'm going to be gone guys. I'm leaving tomorrow to go out of town. I'll be gone next week. Uh, with my family, um, of course, available if you need anything. But uh, Sharon will be running next week's session. So have a great week. Have Thank a you. great week. Safe travels, Matt. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, guys.